global war enthusiast here. We're living in a time of board gaming's renaissance. There's so many excellent games to choose from. The core attraction of board gaming is the opportunity to make interesting decisions that have meaningful outcomes. A game like Eldritch Horror does this through storytelling. American Civil War games offer meaningful outcomes on a national level. World War II gaming offers players the ability to wrestle with the most consequential decisions of the last century. We gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for the sacrifices and achievements of our ancestors when we play a World War II war game. If you're looking for a World War II board game, here are six reasons why I recommend historical board gaming's Global War 36. I have played many World War II board games, some quite complicated. I was a rules editor for Avalon Hill's Advanced Third Reich, Teaching my friends to play Advanced Third Reich was a heavy lift and would have been impossible if I had not first introduced them to a more approachable World War II board game, Axis and Allies. This is a game simple enough to teach an adolescent, and many people have played this game. People already grasp the idea of capturing territory, getting money from that territory, purchasing units with various capabilities, and then engaging in combat by rolling dice. And there's another great appeal to a game based on Axis and Allies miniatures. We get to play with army men again, which is just pure fun. Since Global War 36 is based on Axis and Allies, it will be so much easier to teach people to play and they'll already have an idea of what they're signing up for. The way I pitch it is, you know how you felt about risk when you started playing Axis and Allies? That's the way you'll feel about Axis and Allies once you start playing Global War 36. New players will want to know what makes Global War special and different from Axis and Allies. The first major difference is that Global War is a three-player game. Axis and Allies is a two-player game. It's in the name. You're either on the Axis side or the Allies. Adding the comma turn to the mix completely revolutionizes the game by adding another dimension. And I mean that literally. Axis and Allies is played in two dimensions, on the plane of the surface of the map. But once you play a three-player game, you'll understand there's an entirely different game being played off the table in the relationship between the three major powers. The Allies want Germany to engage the USSR in Operation Barbarossa, while the Soviets are talking up the advantages of Operation Sea Lion, promoting peace between the German and Russian peoples. There are proxy wars where the Axis contend with the Comintern in Spain, or the Allies in Comintern fight for dominance in China. The diplomacy, promise-making, and betrayal adds both unpredictability and an opportunity for victory through unconventional means. One of the major flaws of Axis and Allies is a phenomenon called scripting. I used to run the Axis and Allies AOL ranking page back when dinosaurs ruled. At one time, I owned multiple sets of Axis and Allies and would be playing up to six games at once via email. I played so many games that I end up playing the game the same way every time. Good players knew what I was going to do, and they were scripted as well. It then came down to rolling on one or two major battles. Or perhaps the game hinged on a particular role for technology. The script good players would follow destroyed the fun of the game. But the three-player design of Global War completely obliterates this kind of scripting. Any strategy you may have had as the Allies will be thrown out the window if Japan and the USSR collude on a joint strategy to invade India. Some other World War II serious board games I will not name engage in a different type of scripting. They script by what the rules will allow. They are games that force you down certain paths to maintain historical, historical authenticity. There's always a tension in game design between gameplay and historical accuracy. These other scripted games have bowed to realism and sacrificed gameplay. But Global War 36 does not take this path. The designers have put gameplay ahead of accuracy, but they lay out appropriate consequences that help you see why countries in World War II made the decisions they did. The USSR can invade a neutral Norway, which is ahistorical, but if they are able to hold Norway to the end of the game, they will deny the Allies a victory point. On the other hand, by doing so, Sweden will join the Axis. The designers allow players to make interesting decisions that have meaningful consequences. This is another way that scripting is prevented and interesting gameplay is promoted. Speaking of interesting decisions, I love that Global War 36 starts in 1936. Australian Design Group also offers a 1936 start in their Days of Decision, 
which is a comp companion game that allows you to transition into their brilliant World War II game, World in Flames. But Global War's approach isn't a companion game or add-on. A 1936 start is part of the standard game, and it's a brilliant way to start learning the game. There are two proxy wars in Spain and China. Italy is in the midst of a struggle in Abyssinia. You can choose what technologies you want to begin focusing on. You choose what to focus your spending on and where to deploy your forces. When you compare this to, say, a 1940 start in Axis and Allies 1940, it's infinitely more satisfying. It's a gradual ramping up of intensity and is a good way to introduce players to the game. I think there is much more diplomacy and above-the-board interplay between the three major alliances in this early part of the game, and it's delicious. The fifth reason I recommend Global War 36 is their technology system. Technology was a major factor in World War II. Just think about the battle for the Atlantic. German submarines were dominant during the happy time. Then the Allies responded with ASW technology, like sonar. The Germans responded with advanced submarine technology, like electric motors. And then the Allies increased their air coverage with long-range aircraft and escort carriers. Many World War II board games allow a country to pour their production capacity into technology and speed up the unlocking of technology. In Axis and Allies, you could spend all of your money rolling for technology. And if you rolled a six on a six-sided die, you developed a technology. But what you got was random. This is a poor system. Global War system is much better. First, you can only roll for technology based on how much production capacity a particular country has, as reflected in the number of major factories you possess. A major factory costs 18, and that only gets you one additional die roll per turn, so it's difficult to dramatically increase your country's ability to conduct research. But you get to spe specifically research the technologies that best suit your strategic vision. Let's say you get four rolls. There are 16 different technologies to research, and you get to pick which of the four you want to focus on. The designers have cleverly addressed the luck factor in technology by requiring a country to achieve four levels of understanding in a particular technology in order to unlock that technology. This decreases the potential that someone spends five and unlocks heavy bombers by pure luck. Global War System increases the difficulty of obtaining particularly valuable or complex technology by worsening the odds from 50% to advance one level down to as low as 33% to advance one level, depending on the technology. It's a well thought out design that I really appreciate. Some World War II games are too simple and they end up broken because of it. If you tried to make a game that and limited yourself to a 20 page rule book, it's likely gonna be a poor World War II simulation. Other games are intensely difficult. Here are the rules for Australian Design Group's World in Flames, an excellent World War II game. The rulebook is 93 pages long, and that's with the fine print that you can see here. Committing to such a game is a huge undertaking, and it's going to be difficult to find gaming partners. It will be hard to teach others because you need to read the rules, but when you show most people these rules, they shut down and slowly back away from you. On the other hand, Global War 36's rules hit the magic Goldilocks zone. Yes, the rules are 72 pages long, but it's with bigger print and has lots of helpful tables and pictures. People who are new to the game already have a good feel for the rules because they are based on Axis and Allies. With the 1936 start, you can ease them into the game and let them get a feel for the interesting decisions they'll be making. Some World War II games I used to love grew like cancer, adding rules upon rules. It can kill a game to endlessly add one rule, then another rule to balance the new addition, then another rule to balance that. Morton, the lead designer for Global War, has stated he wants to prioritize simplicity, and when I heard him say that, I was relieved. He has also stated he prioritizes gameplay over historical realism. I agree with that decision as well. But while Global War 36 offers accessibility and excellent gameplay, it also currently has over 40 expansions covering everything from commanders to the Deutsch Afrika Corps to oil. If you're, you have used the base game to build a cadre of committed and experienced players, you can add expansions to your heart's desire. It's a tremendous accomplishment and a tribute to the designers. But it wouldn't be fair for me to end this video without disclosing the most ominous downside, cost. The game is purchased piecemeal. There's no way to purchase the game in one fell swoop. You will likely spend $120 per
purchasing Axis and Allies 1940 Europe and Pacific. Then you'll need to purchase the map. I got the middle-sized 4 foot by 8 foot map for $170. Then you'll need to fill out your armies with all the pieces that are not covered by Axis and Allies Europe slash Pacific. You might buy rondelles and other accessories. I've spent over $1,300 on this game. She's an expensive mistress, so be warned. But with that said, I strongly recommend Global War 1936. Just want to make a shout out to Access and Allies board gaming and combat miniatures for their excellent work you can see here. Thanks for listening.